I think one of the real great lessons and good things that came out of COVID is I think it I think empathy went up. You know, um, um, a lot of leaders, a lot of people in leadership positions, um, when COVID struck, they picked up the phone and called their team members one by one and said, "Are you okay?" Whether they were effective or ineffective leaders prior to COVID, they did that. They, they just defaulted to being human. And the irony is, is that's just called good leadership. Like, you should have been doing that. And I hope you continue to do that. It's not just in this moment of time. And you talk about the infinite game and worthy rivals and competitors. There's not a single company on the planet when COVID struck that was obsessed with beating their competition. Every single one of them was obsessed with just staying alive. And by the way, that's an infinite mindset. The obsession with staying in the game and staying alive is the, is the correct mentality in good times or bad times. And so the point is, is the irony is, is, is that those skill set, are in, many of them are innate. We just, for some, for some reason, ignore them or suppress them or think that they're only relevant at one time and not another. Um, uh, and uh, I think that was, you know, when we all went virtual, you know, and we saw people disheveled. And you know, sometimes leaders, they put on a brave face all the time. They always have all the answers. They're always confident, always happy, always good. And uh, that actually sometimes backfires. Um, I, I had a, when I was young in my career, I had uh, my first time having a direct report. I had one direct report, Cynthia. She made me look good every day. And it was my habit to let her sit in on more senior meetings just to learn. She had, would have no role. I would just invite her to sit in. Why not, right? And we had a very senior uh, client call with me and a couple of, and a bunch of the senior folks, and Cynthia was just sat on the, on the sidelines to listen. And it was a very frustrating call that did not go well. And when we hung up the, the, when we hung up the, the conference call, I vented. It all came out, negativity against this client, right? In front of people who were more senior than me or peers who I trusted, and some of them were, you know, mentors, and, and so I felt safe doing it. And then I turn around and I see Cynthia sitting there and as we're walking out of the meeting, I go, I'm so sorry. You shouldn't have seen that. That was totally unprofessional. I totally apologize. And she said, no, no, no. I'm so glad you did that because I've been frustrated with this client, and I've been struggling with this client, and you're always happy, and you're always good, and you're always confident. And I started to believe it was me. And seeing your frustration made me feel it's not me. And so when we saw our leaders and our, and our colleagues disheveled and tired, and, and scared, it actually made us come together. Um, when we saw their kids run through the screen or their puppy get in the way, all of a sudden they became human. They have families. We knew what their houses looked like. We knew what their design sense looked like. I hate it when people put those artificial backgrounds because I actually want to see your space. You know, How come you have no art on any of your walls? <laughs> You know, buy that person some art. I know what I'm getting you for your next bonus, you know? Um, but I thought it made us a lot more human. And what I'm really hoping, I'm hoping is that some of that survives. Um, that we do get to know somebody and know the names of their kids and know that they've got a four-year-old sitting on their lap. Like, I thought that was beautiful. And it all made us all more, more patient, too. Like, we didn't care that they were distracted for a minute, you know? 